Hello and welcome to Board Game Gumbo. Today we're unboxing Animal Kingdoms by Galactic Raptor Games. This is a game for one to five players that plays in about 45 minutes. You're going to be playing cards from your hand using uh, different rules set up by the game in an uh, attempt to have most area control in several different areas. So here we have uh, a rule book. There is obviously solo play here, because so it does play a single player, as well as uh, difficulty ratings. So here we have some cardboard. So these orange ones at the top will be randomly assigned to each area and they'll determine how many points that area is worth at the end of that round. So the first player, the player who has the most pieces in an area is gonna score whatever points are on this orange tile. Second place is gonna score three points regardless of what the actual point total for first place is. And then third place will score one point. Here on the green tiles, these are the withdrawal tokens, the first player to withdraw, which requires you to pass all your further rounds as well, will get one of these tokens randomly and will score up to five additional points at the end of the round. And then finally, we have some battle tokens, which are used when there is a tie. Here we have just our scoreboard. We have player tokens for victory points for each player. And then each player will have a number of cubes, which will determine their control of the different areas. So we have our game board here, which is put together a bit like a puzzle. You're going to start when you score, you always start with the area with the lowest number of locations. And then you go clockwise around the board. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna do when you start out is just take your little victory point tokens and you're gonna assign three randomly to each location. You're gonna play a total of three rounds, so you will end up using all of these tokens. And as I said, these tokens only mark what the first player or the person who has the most control of an area is gonna score. Everything else is just either three or one, depending on if you're second or third place. We've got a deck of little cards here, which are gonna be all of the sort of special circumstances that you have to um, abide by when you're placing cards in these areas. And these will fill up these little scroll tokens here. So, Let's look at the bigger cards first because they'll better explain these if you can see these bigger cards first. Each player is going to be dealt four of these cards at the beginning of the round. And every time you play a card, you're going to recover from the deck that number of cards. So most of the time, you'll have four cards in your hand. There are some exceptions, but just for the basic game, you usually have four cards in your hand. And these cards have a suit or an animal type, and then they have a number. And it goes from eight to one in all of the different suits. I'll give these a quick shuffle. It 
So you're going to deal four of these out to each player. And now we can kind of better explain how this works. So on your turn, you're going to take one of three actions. One action is to withdraw, which basically means you have no other actions you can take, or you just really want those extra point tokens that you'll get for withdrawing first. Again, only the first person to withdraw is going to get those tokens. Second thing you can do on your turn is rally, which basically allows you to discard any number of cards and draw up back to uh, your hand size. So if you don't like the cards in your hand, you can do that. And the third thing you want to, you're going to do, which is what you're going to mostly be doing is you're going to claim an area. And that's where you're going to play a single card from your hand into one of the five different areas on the board. And you can choose what area you, what area you're going to play to as long as the card you're playing matches this special rule that is going to be here. So say for instance, that this card was here and then the first player played a five there for playing a card there. They get to put out one of their control markers. So say it was the blue player and they're going to put one of these tokens out here. As you can see, each area has a different number of these control locations on them. And at the very top, you see a location with a crown. When you play a card to an area, it doesn't matter what area you control as long as the last person is going to place on the crown. And the crown does two different things. One, you immediately have to withdraw. So whether or not you had cards left that you wanted to play, you're going to immediately withdraw. If you're the first person to withdraw, you are going to get that little token. The reason why you want to play into that top spot, even though it forces you to withdraw, is because this cube here at the end of the round is going to go up into one of these council spaces. Every other cube on the board is going to get removed, except for the council space tokens. And that's nice because that gives you additional influence over that area on subsequent rounds. You're going to play a total of three ages. So because you played here and it moved up into this council, you have basically got one extra influence in this area before you've even played a card. So that's a reason why you want to do that. But we've played a card here. We've played a five. And this rule here says that the next person who plays has to play a card that's either one value higher or one value lower. So the next player could play a six there and get their little cube there. And then the next player could play just a seven and get their little cube. And the last player could play either a six or an eight. So as long as you're following this rule, that's fine. And that's a pretty straightforward one. There are some, however, that are a little more extravagant. So this one says that the card you play there has to equal either neighbor, neighbor's rank. So a rank being the number of the card. So if this card was here, and let's say, so the, the top card here is a seven. Let's say that the top card of this red area over here is a three, meaning that to play here, you have to play either a three or a seven. You can't play any other card. It doesn't matter what suit it is, what animal it is, as long as it matches that rank. And as you can see, there are quite a few of these. So there's a lot of variability there. Here you have to match the beast. So you have to match the color of the card. This, you can only play fours and fives and so on. Same rank or beast. So this would work for this one as well because it's the same beast over and over. At the end of each age, you're going to have one of these on each location. But at the end of each age, after you score and people get, gain their points and their tokens, and you clear away the cubes for the next age, you're also going to clear away these rule restrictions and put out new ones. And then you're going to play a second age and score a second time. And then you're going to play a third age. And the person who has the most points at the end of age three is going to be the winner. And that's everything you get in a copy of Animal Kingdoms from Galactic Raptor Games.